I had asked you which were your favorite vocal exercises, and you said the roller coasters up and down. Can you give an yeah. example of that so people know what you were talking about? Oh. Okay, aim high on the low note, very quiet. He. He. Well, See? perfect. Much better. Much better. Much better. That was much better. I needed to stretch it out. That was Ariana Grande singing. She may be world famous for her spectacular voice, but that's really just one part of who she is. She's also one of the sweetest and most caring people I know. So when I asked her if she'd be down to demonstrate how a voice lesson works, she said, sure. Let's do it. I love it. Uh, which is a good key, by the way? Is this good? Whatever you want. Right there, wee, wee, wee. Mm -hmm. sure. Okay. Let's try this on a wee. Wee, 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 wee. Then I might say, give it a little more support on the high note. Wee, 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 wee. Now just to loosen up your shoulders. Mm. Wee, 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 wee. One more. Oh my gosh. Wee, 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 wee. You're probably more familiar with hearing her singing songs than exercises. Songs like Positions, Dangerous Woman, Thank You Next, God is a Woman. You know, there's a lot of hits in there, so I won't keep going with that. You might have grown up with her on Nickelodeon, where she played the adorable, but shall we say, very dim-witted Cat Valentine on the show Victorious. Or you might have actually seen her on Broadway, where she first got her start in the musical 13. And then if I thought, well, she's sounding a little, not you, because you don't ever get stiff, but let's say someone oh, was yeah, feeling okay. stiff or whatever, I'd say, hey, move around, loosen up your body a little bit. <laughs> I'm so stubborn when you ask me to move. <laughs> I'm always like, I don't want to flail around. <laughs> I'm waving my arms now just so everyone can visualize. Yeah, it's not just stubborn <laughs> on that. But <laughs> there's been times when I've given you an exercise and you, I told someone this one time, I said, yeah, there's times I'll say, I'll play in and you'll go. I'm literally like, Eric, <laughs> that's insane. <laughs> It'll literally be like, la, 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 and I'm like, Eric, that's 78 notes. I don't have time. That's a whole aria. I have to sing God is a Woman in four minutes. I don't have this kind of time. This is Backstage Pass. I'm Eric Vitro. In this podcast, I'm inviting you into my studio to hear how some of the most successful and famous singers work on their craft, the art of singing. They also happen to be students of mine, so I have to say, I know them pretty well. We'll talk about everything, their vocal process, their careers, how their emotional life affects their voice, and how it all intertwines with their lives. For me, being a vocal coach is all about listening and thinking on my feet. I ask a student to do a vocal exercise, and then how their voice responds determines what the next exercise should be. I have to ask myself a lot of questions along the way. How does their voice sound at that moment? Or how did it react to the exercise? What I hear tells me what my student needs at that moment. I'm so glad we just did that because now people can understand that's how a voice lesson works. I've learned... Yeah. By doing it, because you're now singing a cappella, I think it improves people's ears because they're really hearing themselves. Oh, yeah, it's not fun. Yeah, and they're singing along with the piano. They don't even know like the little tiny things where it goes a little in and out. Ariana and I have been working together for over 14 years now. Well, maybe even more. I think we met in 2007. We don't always spend all of our time with singing lessons, though. I mean, we've had some great conversations and we've spent some really fun holidays together. Guys, we painted each other mugs. <laughs> are we okay? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think we are okay because it was really fun. No surprise, the one she painted was gorgeous and amazing and creative. And mine was okay. But let's rewind. Let's go back to the beginning because, of course, her journey started before ours did. Now, didn't your grandmother take you to your first audition? Yeah, so Nona took me to audition to sing the national anthem at the Panthers game. That was a really cool moment. I remember singing on the ice and being freezing cold 
and it was like my first real gig. And I sang the national anthem for the Panthers, my hometown, <laughs> Florida's hockey team. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light? At this point, she's only eight years old. But if you could see her, watch her when she sings this, she has this beautiful look in her eyes and she's already connected with the audience. You can really predict she's going to go somewhere with this singing thing. And it was so fun because I used to go to the games all the time anyway. As a kid, my parents would take me and I had really bad luck. I was hit by the puck like twice. And so I got to ride the Zamboni like <laughs> because they felt bad because my wrist was like broken and mangled and I was like sad. <laughs> so I was already a huge Panthers fan growing up. So getting to sing and having that be my first like real gig kind of was so sweet and so special. And so, yeah, it was really cool. And I remember finishing and being like, I want to do it again. Only you would get hit twice. I know. That is my total luck. That really set the pace here. It sure did. <laughs> but really, Ariana sets the bar high with everything she does. I mean, have you heard this girl sing I Have Nothing by Whitney Houston? It's one of the hardest pop songs there is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I love that song. That's always one of my favorites. That was one of our first songs that we did together when we had our one of our first lessons, right? Yeah, exactly. I remember I always think of you with that song and how great it was. And I think it's one of the best songs ever written. I love that song so much. And then when David Foster came and played the piano for you that night, I know, remember? That was crazy. For anyone who doesn't know, David Foster is a hugely successful songwriter and producer. His really long, long list of collaborations includes artists like Celine Dion, Whitney Houston, Michael Bublé. The list is endless. That was so insane. I remember being like so in awe and just so shook that that happened. This was obviously way later for those listening who don't know the context. This was after 13 and after I met Eric and he had introduced me to David and I got to sing it with him. And that was a really cool thing. That was at the forum, but she also sang it at my house at parties. The only parties, just for context, that I've ever been to in my entire life have all been Eric Vitro parties. That's not just, true. <laughs> just so everyone knows, I have been to four parties in my life, and they've all been Eric Vitro parties. <laughs> it's so not true. It but... is. I promise. They were the best. It's so much fun. There's always so much music and so much singing and great company. So I got to tell you, there's something really so special about seeing Ariana sing in an intimate setting, you know, in a house or in a backyard. At a small party, of course, not all of the parties we had were small and cozy. For one of them that her mom, Joan, and I threw together, we actually crammed about 300 people in a gigantic tent we put up covering my tennis court. We brought in all white sofas and chairs. We placed a gorgeous grand piano right in the center behind the pool, and the pool was filled with floating white candles. So it was pretty magical. But whether she's at a stadium with 50,000 people or in a tent, Anytime that Ariana is singing, she brings her all, even when she's doing karaoke with friends. Oh my God, that was the best night of my life. That was so much fun. And I remembered I was mesmerized because, well, first of all, you knew every song, every melody, every lyric, and you could improvise on them, which was amazing. But also, I don't know if I've ever seen you look more joyous. Here's the other thing, more at peace. You looked so peaceful, like, ah. I wondered if you wanted to talk about it a, a little bit. How has that developed your voice and taste? I think the theater music gives me so much joy. That was the most fun night. It was like such a precious thing. Theater Babies, it's just a different kind of nostalgia. Listening to musical theater is a different kind of fulfilling <laughs> car ride. You know, like if you throw on some Avenue Q or Wicked in the car, like you're just guaranteed to feel comforted. Most Broadway songs have longer sustained notes than pop songs do. You can hear it here, where Ariana sings the theme song from Beauty and the Beast. True as it can be and so in order to sing them well, 
people have to develop their lung capacity and their breath support so they can hold those longer notes. Also, Broadway songs usually have wider pitch ranges, so singers need to do vocal exercises and learn techniques that will increase their range. These are a few of the reasons singing these songs are so helpful in developing someone's voice. However, there is a really big difference in the way you use your voice when singing pop as opposed to Broadway. There's a humongous difference. Of course, you use a totally different part of your voice for each. And of course, I don't, you know what I mean? Like, I would never sing a Broadway song with my pop placement. But, you know, I grew up singing theater. So, of course, that's where my heart is. I wish I got to do more of it. I wish I could go be on Broadway. I wish I could go sing more musical songs. That's like the easiest, most fun, most soaring, freeing, beautiful feeling ever is singing show tunes. That, to me, is like my heaven. But, of course, like, you can't use that placement on a pop song either. You know what I mean? Like, you can't sing, like, been here all night. Like, you can't, like, <laughs> been here all day. And boy, got me walking side to side. Well, you. I'm trying to hide it. I forgot the words, and I wrote them, so there you go. You could do it. I just don't think it would See, go over. See, you're standing over there with your body. I don't know. <laughs> Thank you, know you. I mean? next. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thought I'd end up with Sean, <laughs> but he was in the match, you know? Or break up with your boyfriend. Can you imagine that in a soprano mm -hmm. You got me some type of way. <laughs> I don't know. That's not funny. <laughs> I ain't used to feeling this way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is Backstage Pass with Eric Vitro, and we'll be right back. Thanks for listening to Backstage Pass. Let's get back to chatting with Ariana Grande. Getting back to voice lessons, remember what I said earlier? A voice teacher has to really listen to where a singer is at in the moment. They might be physically tired, or they might have oversung the day before, or they might have been doing interviews and talking for hours before their lesson. All of these factors determine what the warm-up needs to look like. Sometimes a singer will tell me what's going on, but usually I can hear it in their speaking voice when they come in, and I know what we need to do that day. It could be that they're stressed, which creates a tight, constricted tone, so I'll use techniques that help them loosen up so they can sing more freely and feel more flexible. Or they might be singing too heavy in their lower range, which makes it impossible to make a smooth transition into their higher notes. There are days when I just go, all right, this is going to take a little longer. It's going to be a little bit more of a process to warm up their voice, but I always know we're going to get there. A lot of people really don't like those wide range exercises, starting really low and going really high, but you do. Yeah, I like the big stretches. I like can't wait. I always want to go really, really, really high. And you're always like, we have to warm up your low range. You're like, we have to exercise the whole thing. Relax. And I'm always like ready to go. And she always is. She's always ready to go. But she's also a perfectionist. And that means she can be really hard on herself. Oh, I am so, I'm so, so, so brutal with that. You well, know you me. I are, am, so, yeah. I might, I, I, yeah, no, I'm very, I can't stand it. Yeah. But anyway. Well, you have that incredible ear that's like ridiculous. Thank you. Ridiculous. That makes it very annoying to work with me. <laughs> when you have a great sense of pitch, it can drive you crazy if you hear the slightest note off. I always had a very, 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 like, picky, sensitive ear, and it's kind of made me into a perfectionist and kind of this neurotic control freak. And when it comes to comping my own vocals and vocal production and, and arranging and producing and stuff like that, if the EQ changes even a little bit, I'll be able to tell. Yeah, I don't know. It's always been something that I've noticed in a big way. And um, I think that's been a great thing to kind of grow into having all the control over in my life. I've just been, I've learned, you know, how to do it myself throughout the years and kind of like, that's been really cool. My MD, Johnny, he said that my ears are like a telescope 
and I can analyze the surface of Mars. But it's a blessing and a curse because like, it's wonderful to be able to articulate what I want and how exactly I want my voice to be mixed. And, and you know, of course, that's how you create a sound and that's how you can control your tone and, and have that be a part of your sound. But I wish I could just relax. <laughs> I think it can be easy for fans to forget how much work goes into being a professional singer. There's constant interviews, writing and recording sessions, rehearsals, and being on tour. Touring is really hard, and that's why so often I do FaceTime warm-ups with my students on their performance days, usually in their dressing rooms before the sound checks or the shows. The schedules and traveling can be grueling. Plus, think about it, being around all those people can lead to a lot of colds and flus. Ariana does shows all the time when she's sick. To her and most singers I know, canceling a show is devastating. You don't want to disappoint your fans, and you know how much work everyone has put in, from the dancers, the musicians, the crew, the makeup people, the hair people, everybody. Everyone is working behind the scenes for every single show, and you don't want to let them down by not getting on the stage. But when your ear, nose, and throat doctor tells you that not canceling could lead to you canceling an entire tour, or could even result in permanently harming your voice, you have to cancel. You just have to. I've unfortunately had to cancel a couple of shows in the past, of course, like six years, because I think that it is physically so demanding and so strenuous to do hundreds of shows around the world. And, and it's incredible, but it's also physically very tasking and between the traveling and the flying and the bus and the everything. And it's like your body kind of becomes very run down. And I know for me personally, I was sick for like four out of 10 months on the sweetener tour. And thankfully, I only had to cancel like one show, I think, or two. But um, one of them was because I had a tomato allergy. But thankfully, the rest of it, I was either healthy or able to sing around the conditions I was dealing with, which was like bronchitis for most of it. I think the reason why I was able to get through so many shows as I was when I was sick was due to our work together and our warm-ups. Like I would wake up with f just air coming out and just like no sound would be able to come out. And I would I would go to my sink to brush my teeth and like start waking up my body and, and I would go, mm, and sometimes air would come out and sometimes it wouldn't and sometimes sound would come out and sometimes it wouldn't. And I'd say, okay, I would stay silent for two more hours until I ate breakfast and I did my routine. And then I would do a little more like, mm, and then it would come back a little more and then I would rest again. And then by the time it was ready for warm up time, I could get out the sounds that I was that I needed to get out and by the end of our work together like we would do our warm up and then we would take our little 5 minute breaks and I'd be silent for 5 minutes and then we do another 15 minutes and I'd be silent for another 5 minutes we do another 15 minutes and by the time that I was ready to go on stage my voice was m making all of the sounds like all of the notes were there and when she's on tour there are times when she can be 13 or 14 or 15 or however many hours ahead of LA time Eric used to wake up at crazy times when I was overseas on tour to warm me up, and it would be, like, the sweetest, best blessing ever. I was like, wow, thank God. <laughs> All right, just so you understand, on the days that I did those warm-ups at 2 or 3 in the morning, I would actually do them from bed. I mean, it's too cold to get out of bed and go downstairs, so let me explain how I did it. I have a whole rig set up in my bedroom. I have an adjustable bed that sits me up so I'm in a good sitting position. I have a table that swings out over me with my keyboard on it and my laptop so I can see her. And we go from there. That work was really what kept me healthy for 99% of the tour. And I really am appreciative of that. I don't want to miss my opportunity to say that. I, Our work together kept me healthy and I didn't, thank God I've never had to cancel a tour because of a hemorrhage or or been at a loss. You know what I mean? So it's, it's just been such a blessing to learn how to sing around those things with you and um, to sing and have technique that has been evolving and maturing and improving over the years and 
get through hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of live shows where I'm singing live for two hours at a time. And I'm very appreciative. I think a lot of that is just our work together and training to become a healthy vocalist. Thank God I've been able to sing through things like that because it starts from the moment you wake up. You don't warm up 45 minutes before the show and you don't, you know, put it down the second you get off stage. It starts from the minute you wake up. Thank God. I think I've had pretty good luck. I, I thankfully have never had to cancel massive amounts of shows or anything because of my voice. It's been such an incredible blessing and it's been a lot of work. Yeah, it has been a lot of work, but it's been so much fun. It doesn't really feel like work. And I got to say, for better or worse, for Ariana, that spirit and drive is constantly there. I remember one night at the forum and you did like, I think it was six shows in a row, which I thought was insanity, but you were making up for one that had to be canceled. (laughs) And your mother pulled me aside and said, would you please, please encourage her just to rest tonight? And I went, well, of course she's going to rest, Joan. And she went, no, I don't think she is. And I said, I don't know what you're talking about. And then I went over to you and I said, now you're going to rest your voice tonight. And you looked at me and said, no, I'm going to the studio. And I was like, it's one in the morning. You can't go to the studio. And you went, no, I'm going to. I'm very inspired and I want to record. (laughs) Yeah, you were very upset with me that night. See, that's the thing. There's like, it's like once it's on autopilot, like once the chords are like, oh, I got it, whatever. Show, schmo, (laughs) we can do this. Sweetener show, whatever. Like once it's in autopilot and your body's like not recovering from bronchitis, you're just kind of like, oh, yeah, I can do the it. notes are there. <laughs> They'll come out. Let's go to the studio after whatever. So it's like, <laughs> yeah, you were not pleased with me that night. I think I was scarred from that night, though, because I just knew you weren't going to go home, even though in my mind I was thinking, go home, <laughs> go home and rest, rest that voice. <laughs> And I'm always trying to send out that mental telepathy, that vocal juju. Come on, drink a lot of water, get some rest, get 12 hours sleep tonight. But no matter how much I do it, and no matter how many times I tell someone, rest your voice, go home, don't go to that party, the after party, what a bore. But, you know, sometimes they don't always listen. But I do. I'm always listening. And because I listen, I'm pretty aware of how my students' voices are constantly changing, hopefully for the better, hopefully improving. I was curious, though, what Ariana thought about her vocal evolution. So I asked her. How would you say your voice has changed over the years? Ooh, that's a good question. I, It's funny because I, I listen back to, like, my first album and I sound like a baby, but I don't know when, when it kind of grew up, I guess. Even listening to old talking, my voice was really kind of, I think tired, (laughs) which my whole body was, (laughs) to be fair. But I think I, yeah, hadn't found the balance yet with my schedule and doing all that promo in the beginning and doing all that in the first few years of the music stuff. I think my speaking voice and my singing voice were, they sounded so different because I think they also were tired. I think that also strengthened my voice in a way where like now it really takes a lot, 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 lot more abuse to get me to that whispery, raspy point, you know? Right. But I don't know. My voice is healthier now through the years of touring and needing to push through the shows and learning healthy placement and kind of, you know, having to maintain that. I think it's just been experience and years of of learning and singing all these songs so many times, you know? <laughs> yeah. I, well, I think I think for people listening, it's a lesson in that, I think, first of all, you were so young when you were doing so much. And I think that when you're young like that, your your vocal cords aren't fully developed, so they're not, no. they've not reached maturity. And also when you're young, it's hard to always remind yourself, oh yeah, I should be supporting my speaking voice as well as my singing voice. And I should take some vocal rest tonight. And I should yeah, go yeah, home yeah. and go to sleep. So I think it's hard to remember those things. So I think the combination of you learning, learning technique, your voice maturing, and like you said, you had to sing through it and get through it. And I think that also made you stronger. Yeah. That's how I look at it. And also, 
all of our lessons and being able to work through the exhaustion together and somehow always find a way to make it all come out and feel beautiful and healthy doing it. Like, I don't remember many times where I have like sung through something and been like, oh, thank God it happened. We got through it. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like we've always put in the work to make sure that even at my most exhausted points, the vocals are the least of our issues. I would agree with that. That's never been an issue for us. If anything, what Ariana really had to deal with was her shift from Nickelodeon star to growing into what she wanted to be as a recording artist. Yeah, in the way beginning, like putting out the way was really freeing and terrifying for me because I was so convinced that I had to be one thing because people knew me from my show that I was doing from Nickelodeon and I was playing a character that a lot of people knew me as. And I was kind of terrified to do what I actually wanted and make the music that I actually wanted to make and have my brown hair and be, you know, wear thigh high boots and what I wanted to be. I think that was also a really big moment for me was putting out my first single that like was on my first album and taking that risk like from the way beginning too, you know, I think obviously as time went on, you got to know more and more and more of me as I lived and as the music became more and more personal. But I think even just from the very first single, like that was a huge risk, you know, it was a really incredible turning point for me. It certainly worked out really well because the way went triple platinum. At the age of 19, our next guest is the star of the Nickelodeon show Sam and Cat, and she already has a top 10 hit here to make her television debut, performing The Way. Please welcome Ariana Grande, featuring Mac Miller. One of my favorite pictures of us is at Ellen, underneath the Ellen show, and you had just done The Way, and you looked so happy. When we were in the dressing room doing her vocal warm-up, I just knew this was going to be the beginning of a huge career. Of course, I wasn't the only one. Everybody could see it. Her fans, her friends, her family. And a few minutes after it aired, Katy Perry actually texted me and said, that girl is totally awesome. I think she has the best voice in pop music. Do you remember the first year you came to LA? We spent Thanksgiving together and we had it here at my house. Your mom organized the entire thing. That was when I learned grande's an adjective. It's not just a name. It's a model to live by. Your grandparents flew out and we were in the living room, like a bunch of us after dinner and and you sang, I have nothing, I played it. And then I got up and your grandfather was standing in the doorway. He hadn't come in. He was just standing in the doorway, observing everything. And I said to him, you must be so proud of Ariana. And he just nodded his head and he went, she's got it. And I remember that was so touching to me. And so I wanted to say to you, you've got it. We've had some really beautiful, special memories together. And you and I have had like the best and most special and most challenging and most beautiful times together. And we've sung through it all. And (laughs) it's been such a journey, you know? It has been, that's for sure. That's been a beautiful journey. It feels like it's still the beginning in a weird, funny way, you know? And I do know because this is just the beginning of a long and beautiful career. I tell my students all the time, just being talented isn't enough to guarantee success. It's the commitment to your craft, your work ethic, your willingness to learn and grow and to practice. And by practice, I mean practice a lot. Aside from her obvious vocal gifts, it's connecting to her passion and working hard that helped Ariana build such a fantastic career. That's what creates the magic. That's what creates a true star. And isn't that true for all professions? For me, experiencing our friendship grow and evolve, that's been the best part of the relationship. I mean, I'm aware she's a superstar in the eyes of the world, but when we're alone, just the two of us in my music room, Nothing has changed from our first days together. I hope hearing about Ariana's vocal journey has inspired you. Knowing her has definitely inspired me. Each week I'll be sharing a vocal tip, something I do with my students that you can try at home. And this week's tip is influenced by Ariana Grande herself. 
Stick around after the break for this week's vocal tip and more from Ariana Grande. And now for this week's vocal tip. I'm so glad Ariana talked about her warming up process because it doesn't matter how great your talent is, whether you're a singer or a dancer, an actor, if you play an instrument or play a sport, to get your best performance, you need to warm up. I always like to do breathing exercises at the top of every class. There's a million of them, but I'm going to show you one that's pretty simple and basic and easy to follow. Try this at home. Put one hand on your chest, and that's just to remind you to keep your chest up, your ribs expanded. Then put one hand on your abdominal muscles, right around your belly button. Take in a deep breath, so you're gonna inhale, and as you inhale, allow your abdominal muscles to slightly expand. And then when you exhale, I want you to pull your abdominal muscles in, pushing the air out. And as you're pushing the air out, you're gonna make a hissing sound. So try that one more time. Take a deep breath in, allowing your abdominal muscles to expand, and then pull them in as you push the air out, making the hissing sound. When you do this, count in your head and see how long you can count for. The goal is to just keep elongating that so that you take in deeper and deeper breaths. You really fill your lungs to capacity. Start stretching them so you can take in more air every time. This way you can hold notes and songs longer or sing longer lines without having to take a breath in the middle. Now that you're connected to your breathing muscles, let's try doing some of those roller coaster slides that Ariana talked about. Some people like to call them sirens. I like to do them after the breathing exercises. So let's try these at home. We're gonna start on an E vowel because that's really the easiest one to keep forward right up front on the roof of your mouth. So what I want you to do is first take a deep breath in and say he, focusing all the vibrations of that E vowel right up front on the roof of your mouth. Try that, he. Then take a deep breath, and this time we're going to slide up and down, just a short slide. He. So try to keep those vibrations right up front on the roof of your mouth. Keep your mouth relaxed, and don't make it too loud. Keep it nice and easy. These should feel very, very comfortable to do. Now do a medium slide where you go a little bit higher. He. Next, let's do a really long one, as high as you can comfortably, never straining, but stretching almost to the very top of your range. He Good. They should feel very easy, very relaxed. You can wiggle your body around as you do them. You can wiggle your jaw, just to keep everything loose and relaxed. Once you feel like you've really gotten it and mastered it on the E vowel and it feels comfortable, try other vowels like ooh, o, a, or a. Now, I'm a confirmed multitasker myself, so during my morning routine, I always try to do a few other things so I'm not wasting any time. What I do is I start my day with a little warm tea and then I toss a yucca shower bomb under the hot water to open up my breathing passages. I sing the roller coaster slides in the shower because let's face it, when you're in a hot steamy shower, you can't help but feel relaxed as you slowly warm up your voice. This process is a great step towards developing the muscle memory of singing freely without tension. If you wanna try out the vocal tips from this episode, I'd love to hear you. Use the hashtag backstagepasspod on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, or wherever you like to post. I can't wait to hear your voices. Let me know how it goes. Backstage Pass with Eric Vitro is written and hosted by me, Eric Vitro, and produced by Morgan Jaffe. Catherine Giardo is our managing producer. Emily Rostek is our associate producer. Mixed and mastered by Ben Tolliday. Additional engineering help from Jacob Gorski. Mia Lobel is our VP of Content. Director of Development Justine Lang helped create the show. 
Thanks also to Jacob Weisberg, Heather Fain, John Schnars, Carly Migliori, Christina Sullivan, Eric Sandler, Maggie Taylor, Nicole Morano, Daniela Lacan, and Royston Bezerg. Original theme music by Jacob and Sita Steele for Premier Music Group. We record at Resonate Studios. Fred Tallickson does our videography, and the photography is by Ken Sawyer. Special thanks to Michael Lewis for inspiration and the best guidance anybody could ask for. And for this episode, thanks to Peter Stengard for mixing and mastering Toulouse Grande. Backstage Pass with Eric Vitro is a production of Pushkin Industries. If you like the show, please remember to share, rate, and review. I mean that, really. To find more Pushkin podcasts, listen to the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Uh, Okay, and by the way, only you would have a dog that can actually sing and sing in tune. Yeah, it's like really bizarre. He sounds like he has auto-tune on. But he's learned from the best. He listened to all the vocal exercises and Toulouse has found his voice. (laughs) 